Uh, good evening, Doctor. Uh, my name is Chong Nin. I'm a student uh, from IUKL. So I have two questions actually, but I'll ask the second one if the organizer permits later. So my first question is, okay, uh, just now in your talk earlier, you were talking about uh, brotherhood uni unity. So it sounds like a potential solution for religious harmony between uh, the many major faiths in this world. So the big, the uh, biggest problem I I think about is like uh, Christianity. There are many different sects, different religious. Uh, I mean, David, uh, different uh, sections, different interpretations by preachers and humans. So based on this human factor that tends to misinterpret a religion, uh, deviating from the main uh, text, the main content of a religion. What is your solution or your response to this uh, problem or to this biggest obstacle to brotherhood unity? But that's a good question that we find in some religion, and I give the example of Christianity, that people interpret the scripture differently, therefore you have different sects, etc. And that's what brings diversity, so what is the solution? Whether the solution is that you go back to the scripture, and if the interpretation differs, and by the different interpretation, if there's a contradiction, then you choose that interpretation which there's no contradiction. For example, you just heard, the earlier brother, when he asked that, why can't a man from Ali Kitab marry? And everyone agrees that you can marry from women from Ali Kitab. So I gave my reasoning that if I believe that you can marry any Ali Kitab, Mary, Sheila, so there will be a contradiction in the Quran. Because one verse of the Quran says you cannot marry a mushrika. And people who worship Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, are doing shirk. That's what the Quran says. So I come up with an answer in which there is no contradiction. So any logical person who hears both the answers will agree with my answer more or any answer in which there is no contradiction. Same with the earlier person who says, I believe Jesus is son of God. So if you believe Jesus, peace be upon him, is son of God, Adam was son of God, Ephraim is son of God, Israel is son of God. Do you give the same status as Jesus? He says no. So people say something but they don't mean it. So when there is a difference in interpretation, I say then why do you give so much respect to Jesus and not to the other prophets? What they are saying actually begotten son. And when they say begotten, I say that word has been removed from the Bible. So when you study, when you do an analytical study, analogical study, you come to the truth. As Jesus Christ, peace be upon said in the Bible, seek the truth and truth shall free you, Gospel of John. So when you're doing research, you easily come to know which is the correct one. But if you follow blindly the church or a particular scholar, blindly without checking right or wrong, then you come into a problem. So that's the reason when you read a commentary of any scripture, what you have to see, how logical it is, and how well it is connected. And you have to take the scripture as a whole, not only one verse out of context. If you take one verse out of context and interpret it, you have to take the scripture as a whole. So when you take as a whole, and that commentary which fulfills the requirement is the correct one. So this has to be done with study, brother. And then you realize, that which is the correct translation and interpretation of the scripture. Hope that answers the question.